The famous Eiffel Tower in France, which once stood as the world's tallest structure about 100 years ago, just grew by another 20 feet in height, now standing around 1,083 feet tall. How's that for a fun fact? This is not the first time that this Paris icon has had a change like this since it was built, and I'm sure it won't be the last because even though the Eiffel Tower was actually once set to be demolished, it has now cemented itself in Paris culture and it is loved by both locals and visitors. I'm gonna be honest, the fact that the Eiffel Tower is 20 feet taller than it was yesterday isn't necessarily enough of a headline to make for an exciting video. But with that being said, I've been wanting to do a video on this amazing structure for a while now, so I just figured with this news coming out, what better time than now to talk about the Eiffel Tower. In today's video, we are going to talk about one of the coolest real estate development projects that has ever happened. We'll get into the icon that it is in Paris today and all that it offers as visitors. And then last, of course, we'll get into how the tower just grew by another 20 feet. So the original design and vision for the Eiffel Tower was really interesting because in the beginning it was actually only meant to be temporary, meaning that it was to be built for just one purpose and then later would be torn down. That plan was conceived in preparation for the World's Fair of 1889, which was going to be hosted in Paris, France, which challenged the city to study the possibility of erecting an iron tower with a square base that was 125 meters across and 300 meters tall. Nowadays that might not seem like much height considering we have several buildings that stand over 500 meters tall, and the Burj Khalifa in Dubai even stands almost 850 meters tall. But building a tower at 300 meters tall in the late 1880s was a pretty major feat, and it made for a structure that was twice the size of the next tallest structure at the time. There was a design competition which was won by somebody named Gustave Eiffel. He was the entrepreneur who put the plan together, but he did work with some engineers and architects named Maurice Coquelin, Emile Nujoir, and Steven Savestre to conceive his initial plans. By the way, Yes, I probably pronounced some of those names wrong, and if I did, I'm sorry. The first edition of the Eiffel Tower was somewhat similar to what you see today, but the architect added some stonework pedestals, arches, and glass-walled halls to dress up the building just to make it more appealing to the locals. It's pretty amazing to try to put yourself into the shoes of these architects and engineers and visionaries back in the 1800s who were being asked to put together a structure made out of iron that's never been done before, and all the while knowing that what they would be building and proposing would just be a temporary structure that would just be showed off at the World Fair. It took about 22 months to build in total, so the Eiffel Tower was finished being built by 1889 with as many as 300 workers per day putting together the 18,000 pieces of the tower which consisted of 73,000 tons of iron and amazingly there was not one construction casualty over the life of the build. There were about two and a half million rivets used to hold every single one of the metal pieces together. Many of those were put together in a factory, but about a third of the rivets needed to be installed on site with heat and a sledgehammer. I visited Paris a few years back with my wife and of course we needed to visit the Eiffel Tower a couple of times during our stay there. We didn't go to the top but we spent quite a bit of time in the surrounding lawns and it's hard to even put into words how massive this structure is when you're up against it in person and how impressive these iron pieces and rivet fasteners really are. Initially the plan to build the Eiffel Tower was to celebrate the anniversary of the French Revolution and to serve as a gateway of the International Exposition of 1889. The original agreement was that after allowing this tower to stand for 20 years, it would then be torn down because it didn't really have any use or utility other than just being a status symbol. I mean, this thing looked nothing like any other French architecture, so even though we all look at it as a cool icon today, it kind of stood out like a sore thumb back then, and it didn't offer anything to the local economy of Paris. Fast forward to World War I though, and that is when the Eiffel Tower really started to show its potential. See, leading up to the war and during the war, the Eiffel Tower ended up being super helpful for capturing information, exposing spies, and broadcasting radio. During the war, the French military were able to use the tower's wireless station to intercept enemy messages. At this point, with the Eiffel Tower being looked at as a useful radio antenna, the decision was made to allow it to continue to stand in Champ de Mars. The Eiffel Tower is still known for radio broadcast transmissions to this day, but it's definitely more known as a tourist attraction nowadays for anybody visiting the city of Paris. This place is considered the most visited paid tourist destination on the planet with around 7 million logged visitors per year, over 250 million total visitors logged since its opening, and during their busy season, they receive around 25,000 new visitors per day. The first
first floor of the Eiffel Tower stands at 187 feet and it can be reached by stairs or elevator. And this level has a restaurant called La 58 Tour Eiffel. Floor two stands at 377 feet in the air. This floor can also be reached by stairs or elevator. And it has another restaurant, which is more of a fine dining restaurant. That one is called Le Jules Verne. Last is floor three, which stands at 906 feet tall. This one consists primarily of a sightseeing deck that is considered to be the most ideal place in the city to view Paris and its surrounding region. To protect the Eiffel Tower from aging and oxidation, it needs to be completely repainted every seven years by hand. Because of that, the tower has changed colors slightly over the years. It started with a Venetian red paint when it was first built, and then it gradually moved to a yellow tone, and then it landed on this yellow-brown tone by the early to mid-1900s. The color you see today, though, is called Eiffel Tower Brown. It was chosen for the harmony that it creates with a Paris landscape, and is a perfect blend of all the colors the tower has seen in prior years. If you've ever been to Paris before, you know that the best time to see the Eiffel Tower is at nighttime when it's all lit up. Since the tower was built before electricity was developed, they actually first illuminated this thing with 10,000 gas lamps to accentuate the tower's lines. That would have been a sight to see. But of course, nowadays the tower is lit every night using energy efficient lighting and projectors. Lighting that surprisingly only accounts for about 4% of the monument's annual energy expenses. The lights turn on automatically to light up the Eiffel Tower as soon as it gets dark, and they run until about 1 a.m. every morning when they automatically shut off. But the coolest part about the lighting by far started in 1999 as we approached midnight, and that is when the Eiffel Tower's first sparkle show happened. There are an additional 20,000 light bulbs that were installed on the Eiffel Tower that took 25 mountain climbers five months to install and now those lights put off an incredible show every hour of the evening on the hour for five minutes straight. I've been overlaying what I could find to share with you guys as far as footage of this light show goes, but I only could find one copyright free video of the light show. I can overlay that right here, so it's pretty interesting. It turns out that there is actually an illumination copyright on the Eiffel Tower at nighttime, which makes it illegal to publish contemporary photos and video of the tower at night. This rule only applies applies in certain countries, but that probably explains why I wasn't able to get too much footage, and that's why you're seeing this five-second loop of somebody shooting the show at night from a boat. All right, so there's your history lesson of the day on the Eiffel Tower. There's plenty more to learn, but I tried to cut out some drier parts of the story and just focus on the highlights. Anyways, the headline that caught my attention today was this piece by Architectural Digest where they said that the Eiffel Tower is now 20 feet taller. As an architecture nut and a junkie for stories like this, of course I had to click and learn more about how this happened, and it turns out that that a new communications antenna was installed on the Eiffel Tower, which increased its height by about 20 feet or six meters. This is not the first time that the height has been increased due to flagpole and antenna changes. There were actually five previous height changes that you can see here, with the original height of the structure being about 1,025 feet, and now the tower standing almost 60 feet taller at 1,083 feet after this last antenna change. We gave the original visionary and his small team of architects and engineers credit earlier for making this architectural icon come to life, but there are 72 other men who deserve recognition here, and the good news is they're getting recognition every day from every single person who visits the Eiffel Tower. These 72 men are French scientists, engineers, and mathematicians who contributed to making the Eiffel Tower possible from an engineering and mathematical perspective, and Gustave Eiffel wanted to honor them by engraving every one of their names on the four sides of the Eiffel Tower just under his first balcony. These letters measure 24 inches tall. They're they're easily visible from the ground, and in somewhat of a controversy, all 72 names only consist of men. Even though there were definitely reservations from the locals at first, nowadays Paris residents are proud of the Eiffel Tower. And there are actually some cities who have built small-scale replicas, but it's estimated that to recreate the Eiffel Tower exactly as it was built but today, even with engineering innovations, it would cost around $480 million. One of my favorite memories of my entire life was going to a local market in Paris getting a sandwich with just ham, Swiss cheese, and butter on a French baguette, and then walking that thing over to the lawn of the Eiffel Tower and looking up as I ate my sandwich. If you've never been to Paris before, I highly recommend it, and when you're there, even if you don't take the elevator to the top, make sure you spend some time at the lawn looking up at this amazing piece of historical architecture. If you enjoyed the video today, guys, if you could hit that thumbs up button down below before you go, it really helps my channel out a lot. And I say it every time, but don't forget to click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber 
subscriber. Only like 30% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. But that's all I've got for you guys this time. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!